Hello, lovely friend. I am Dr. Mary Barson. And I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. We are doctors and weight management and metabolic health experts. And this is The The Real Real Health Health and Weight Weight Loss Podcast. Hello, lovely listeners. Dr. Mary here. And I am thrilled today to be joined by our wonderful guest, Philippa Ballett, for this episode of Real Health and Weight Loss. Philippa is a fabulous human. She's co-founder of a multi-award winning uh, health practice called Chris and Philly Functional Medicine. She's an accredited nutritionist, functional medicine practitioner, that's something I am as well. And she's a coach and trauma therapist. She's a PhD scholar as well. And she is the author of a fabulous new book that has just come out called Ending Body Burnout. And we're going to talk a lot more about body burnout, weight gain and emotional eating during this fabulous podcast. So she works with her husband, Chris Ballett, and together they've helped over 2,000 burnt out people reclaim their health. And she's here today to talk to us a little bit more about body burnout. Yeah. Awesome. So my story, I don't even know where to begin the story these days because I would go right back to as a child, (laughs) but definitely after I had my first babies. So my oldest is now 11. There were definitely signs that my health was on the rocks before having kids, but it was almost like the last straw on the camel's back when I had my first baby. And there were a lot of complications too during birth. Um, I ended up not being able to pee. So my bladder just lost all sensation and ability to send the signal to urinate. So I had an internal catheter in for about four months post-birth, which also meant a lot of UTIs, a lot of back and forth hospital visits and a lot of antibiotics. And not that that was the big thing that then led to all the issues, but it was a combination of some pretty intense stuff. And month by month, I just developed more and more health issues, low immunity, anxiety, depression, chronic back pain, um, hormone issues, gut issues, to the point where when my first baby turned one, I pretty much felt like an 80-year-old. And I wasn't getting better. I was getting worse. Like people like, oh, you'll bounce back after having babies. And so anyway, that led me to a big journey in terms of what's going on in my body, how am I going to heal it? Currently, I wasn't, um, my, like my GP, lovely, ran all the tests that GPs usually do, as Dr. Mary would know. But in the end, nothing really showed up. And the doctor just said to me, I think this is just what it's like to feel like with a new baby. I'm like, but I'm getting worse and worse and worse. And so that led me into nutrition and then later on functional medicine to try and get to the root of what was going on. And during this process too, like with my food journey, because we're going to talk more about emotional eating, is that I went from eating like your standard Australian way of eating, very high carb, processed foods, thought that white bread with a little bit of lettuce for lunch is like super healthy. (laughs) But we now know that's not. And then flipping right to the other side to sprouting and fermenting and eating animal organs and paleo and all that sort of stuff. But I found, I actually developed an eating disorder called orthorexia, which is where you become really obsessed with eating. So for me, emotional eating showed up as that, but I was also kind of binge eating as well on the weekends. I'm like, I thought to myself, I've been so good. I've eaten so well this week. Now I'm going to go and eat all the cake and the sugar. <laughs> and so that wasn't helping And although my body was physically getting better with the protocols that I was doing, my behavioral patterns of perfectionism had a lot of unconscious programming that was going on that related back to trauma. I mean, I didn't have big T trauma growing up, but there were still distressing events that my system hadn't regulated properly. So that's kind of like my story in a nutshell. (laughs) Thank you for sharing that. And I think so many people who have come into... Uh, functional medicine, lifestyle medicine, nutritional medicine, all of these fields, so many of us have had our own health journey, you know, like our own kind of conversion moment that has made us look for something else, look for what the answer could be. And your 
battles with that orthorexia. I can, I can, I can relate to that with that perfectionism. All it's been this whole journey for you. It's been not just food, know what to eat, know what works for you. It's also been this whole mindset changes that needed to happen. In functional medicine, we talk a lot about the timelines. This is, you know, something you come across that that if you can map out people's health along a time or their their significant events throughout their lives, often you can find, not always, but often you can find a time when like the last time someone felt well and then there were a series of events or things that happened to them that made their health turn in a corner in an unhelpful way. But similarly, we can also turn a corner and turn our health back into a helpful way. But not only have you done that, but you've also uh, now helped other people do that too. Much of our audience are people who are interested in health, definitely, as well as weight loss and weight loss as a piece of the puzzle for being well and being healthy. And could you tell us a bit about the beautiful people that you work, your own experience, your experience with your clients and your patients, about what is helpful for people who want weight loss and what is helpful for people who want to improve their health and their metabolism? Mm. Well, there's so many angles we could take that. So I always think like in, (laughs) I'm always thinking about root causes. So if the body's burnt out and that can definitely look like weight gain, whether that's because you're struggling to do the things to support weight loss or you're actually doing the things, but things aren't shifting. It's always what's happening from a physical inflammation point of view and what's happening from a metaphysical inflammation point of view. So the physical stuff, like when it comes to weight and metabolism. And I would also, let's, we'll just chuck in emotional eating there as well. There can be some significant body systems that can burn out or become imbalanced, which then affect the metabolism, but also affect your your mind and your behavior. So I, a few key body systems I think about from that point of view are your adrenals. So your adrenals are so important. They're secreting your stress hormones, cortisol and DHEA. So if you've got cortisol raging through your system and you're not able to regulate that very effectively, it directly impacts your blood sugar levels. And so actually I had a client, this was quite a few years ago, but she came to me and she'd just been to the GP and she was pre-diabetic. And she's like, I don't know why this is happening. I eat so well. Okay. She was drinking a lot of coffees, (laughs) but she was also massively stressed out and so wired. And so then I explained to her, well, from a physiological point of view, you can actually develop diabetes even if you are not eating any sugar because cortisol will cause your blood sugar levels to rise also. And so then in that state, that can absolutely impact your metabolism. But also too, you think about when you're stressed and cortisol goes up and then blood sugar levels go up as well. And then at some point, your blood sugar levels are going to crash. And so that's often where people feel like they'll have like a crash in energy or their mood is really unstable. And so generally people are trying to bring up those blood sugar levels with sugar or carbohydrates because that's what the body's kind of craving in order to get that balance. But it's dysfunctional because it's up and down all day. I remember one time when I was like probably at my sickest, I was in the grocery store with my two kids and they're screaming and I was almost crying and I was so stressed out and I had an obsession with hot cross buns. (laughs) So during this time, like understandable. So I got the hot cross buns and then as I'm walking around the supermarket, I'm like, oh, I'll get some fruit bread as well and let's get a Boston bun while I'm at it. And like the decisions that I made, I felt like that I wasn't even in control of them because my physiology was just going a bit nuts. I mean, obviously I had control over that, but I got home and I'm like, why did I buy all this stuff? Well, let's eat it now. <laughs> so I definitely think about the adrenals. Um, your neurotransmitters are really important, more so from the emotional eating point of view. So things like dopamine. So if dopamine is really depleted, Dopamine is really important for motivation, energy, feel good, excitement. And it often also gets depleted too when there's addictive tendencies. So it can become a bit of a vicious cycle. So if you're addictively eating like a food addiction or 
sometimes it shows up as exercise or alcohol. Wine's quite a good example. Then your body, like the lower those dopamine levels deplete, the more your behavioral patterns get amplified because you're trying to find something for a dopamine hit to bring up those neurotransmitters. Yes. And, you know, food can be so addictive, particularly processed foods that is essentially designed in labs by food scientists to hijack that reward system in our brain, to give us the maximum amount of dopamine and essentially to be addictive and to be hard to regulate. And that is what can make us reach it for more and more Boston buns and more and more hot cross buns. Absolutely. It makes us more reactive, especially when we are stressed and when we are cortisol depleted and needing that dopamine hit. We have a saying at Real Life Medicine that we call cortisol is like liquid bread. It really is uh, <laughs> detrimental to your blood sugar and to your metabolic health and learning or gaining skills to be able to rebalance your your whole adrenal hormone axis is really, really helpful. And that really ties in with body burnout, doesn't it? Like things are out of balance and we want to get them back into a better balance. Could you tell us about your book, Ending Body Burnout, but also what body burnout is? So book is titled Ending Body Burnout. A functional medicine guide. Sounds great. Busy women with energy, mood, and gut issues. I wrote the book. It's kind of my story, but I've also weaved other stories in there as well of people who get a bit stuck with healing their body. We've heard the term burnout, and burnout often comes up in workplaces or in business when you've been going hard for too long, you're burning the candle at both ends, and now you're kind of cooked. We coined the term body burnout because we love working with people with those patterns who are going 110%. <laughs> Generally like high achievers, perfectionism, people pleasers, like programming from the unconscious state that feels like you need to do everything a lot, but in the end it burns out your body. And so body burnout is, well, essentially when you're running those programs or patterns of behavior, then your body systems literally burn out. So your adrenals or your cortisol over time will burn out. So will your neurotransmitters, even within your gut lining, so the condition called leaky gut, even your gut lining kind of gets burnt out because when you're in a stress state, you start eating away at muscle tissue and that can literally lead to leaky gut, which is a really inflammatory condition. Detox pathways. So when you're under stress and you're running busy patterns, you burn through so many nutrients. And so then that can impact even things like your detox system, which is really important for weight loss because fat burning takes place last in the liver. And so, yeah, so that's what body burnout is in terms of how we've coined it. And then in order to heal from that, well, there's four steps. So first of all, like I, I always believe you can't have physical symptoms without there being some sort of physical imbalance. Even if it's psychosomatic or even if it's stress-related, well, your body is still having a physical reaction to those things. And so let's get clear on the body systems, what body systems are out of whack. It is all about bringing people back into a lovely balance. And what you've said about your mind is so true. Our emotions literally are our physiology and our emotions affect our physiological state, just like stress elevates cortisol, elevates blood sugar, which can elevate insulin, which can increase your ghrelin and your carbohydrate cravings and all of these things. Our mind and our emotional state is completely, utterly intertwined. In fact, it is um, exactly the same thing as our physical self. It's just different symptoms of what is going on in this, this incredibly complicated biological organism called human beings. This book sounds fabulous. So you've taken your story and you, you're you sharing it, sharing it with the world to uh, give hope to those burnt out, busy people out there. There are a lot of us, aren't there, in this world, these, these really busy people where I believe that the, the pace of life has just increased exponentially over recent decades and 
we're not, you know, in, we're not evolved from an evolutionary standpoint to be able to, uh, to, to necessarily be able to thrive with this constant bombardment of information that we are always living in. And I I do wonder if a little bit like we're kind of the frogs that the water is slowly heating up since the advent of the internet and smartphones, it's heating up, it's heating up. And, you know, I I hope that uh, that we manage to either jump out or uh, turn off the boiler before we all boil. But it's like people who are in there, they they feel like they're boiling. They kind of realise that this is happening to them. And we can, we can step out of that. Could you share a little bit about the emotional eating? So people want to eat better, busy, burnt out, stressed, reaching for carbohydrates because it we're stressed out, we're more reactive, we are requiring more dopamine, we've got deep-seated trauma or, or emotional patterns in our brain where it is just easier and natural and feels much smoother to soothe ourselves with food. This is a really common, common situation for all these beautiful humans out there. How would you advise people to start to break free from that particularly unhelpful pattern? Mm, Yes, it's so common. I'm going to flip to the metaphysical, like the deeper emotional mental stuff. But as you said before, there's so much research and so much money in the food industry that makes us feel comforted when we eat certain foods. So, you know, the food industry is very tricky. Um, however, sometimes people feel a bit of a slave to that. They're like, ah, oh, you know, it's it's out there. It's nothing to do with me. It's because the food industry has destroyed the food. But from a deeper unconscious point of view, so with the unconscious mind, I always find it so fascinating that it makes up 95% of our mind. And it's also controlling every chemical reaction in our body. So it's absolutely, as you said, Dr. Mary, before, it's absolutely connected to our body systems and our physiology. And it's also harboring all of our unconscious core beliefs about ourselves because we're sense-making humans. And so if we didn't have a belief, then we kind of wouldn't exist. That's what makes us a bit different to, say, an animal and a human. And so these deep beliefs that we have, our brain then starts collecting evidence of that belief. So this can show up in emotional eating in a few ways. So at the very deep core of it is there's generally always deeper core unconscious beliefs that you have about yourself. So it might be something like I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or I'm broken or I'm weak or incapable. And so then you can see how that could directly impact your eating patterns. And so I think about the beliefs as the machine that drives everything. So if you're feeling like you have the best of intentions to eat well, but far out every day, you self-sabotage again. It's like eating the chocolate, the chips, whatever it is, the cake. Like what would be helpful is to zoom out of your body and rather than just looking at your behavior, because that's really just the symptom. It's the symptom of something deeper. And then looking at what must I believe about myself in order to continue behaving this way? Because I don't want to do this. I want to be well and healthy and I want to lose weight and I want to feel good about myself and I want to be happy. Yet currently I continue running this same pattern that's preventing me from getting there. And so that's a great question. What must I believe about myself in order to behave this way? And so then as you start unlocking that stuff, it makes complete sense that you're self-sabotaging. It's like, well, if I have a deep core belief that I'm unlovable, then how the heck am I supposed to love myself? Or if I'm unworthy of health or anything else, then who am I to eat well and look after my health? If I'm weak or incapable, then yeah, of course, I'm just going to keep stuffing up. I'm never going to get there. And so self-sabotage, which shows up as emotional eating, is actually a strategy to try and keep you safe as well. So it's protection. It's almost like don't try 100% because if you fail, it's just going to validate that thing about yourself. So therefore, continue running these strategies And then therefore you can never really fail because you haven't really tried. It wasn't the real you trying. It was just the half-hearted you trying. Yes. So you're safe. You haven't. You haven't failed. But you're also perpetuating that belief about yourself that you can't do it because you never have and you never will. Yes. 
it really does feel like magic when you reprogram those and you shift to them. It's almost like, like we've had clients, I spoke to a lady recently actually, and she's like, yeah, this past month, I haven't wanted chocolate at all. Like at all, like at all. Whereas before it was every day, all day. And she's like, how did that happen? It's like, well, you changed the beliefs, which change everything else. That's pretty powerful. It is. I, mean, I, I get that it's it's good science. It's it's grounded in in human neuroscience and and biology and psychological constructs. But it does seem like magic. I also love that so many people would would come at that problem. I'm eating chocolate every day. Purely, a lot of people would, and there's nothing inherently wrong with this. But they would come at it from, I want to lose weight. That is it. You know, I'm unhappy being in this heavier body. I just need to lose weight. And you know, forcing yourself to not eat the chocolate, that's that's like an action that you can take. But if there are all of these other things going on that are perpetuating the chocolate eating, for example, that it's going to be extremely difficult and probably impossible to sort of stop in a sustainable way without addressing all of this underlying stuff. But the beautiful thing is if you address what's underlying all of this, not only do you eat less chocolate and lose some weight, which is awesome, but your life is so much better. Your health is so much better. Your wellness is so much better and you can rebalance yourself in so many ways. Trauma is another big one too. And the beliefs are entwined in that as well. Like if there's distressing events where you really haven't felt safe or you've been emotional neglect is a huge one. There was a pattern of emotional neglect in your childhood or even adulthood. Then if that's not switched off and trauma is kind of like just a broken videotape loop that goes round and round in the unconscious state. So rather than it being stored in hippocampus's memory, it gets kind of stuck in your unconscious state as if it's happening now. And so therefore, even if you do have now a loving family or people around you, your unconscious state, which controls you because it's 95% of your mind, never quite feels like that. And so then that's where people then are reaching for those comfort foods as a form of trying to address the issue when it ends up just being a a band-aid approach or a strategy, a coping strategy. Yeah, it's perfectly fine as a coping strategy. I mean, like I said, you're not going out murdering people. If you're using food or alcohol to cope, like it doesn't make you a bad person, but it could be unhelpful. It really could be unhelpful for your health and your wellness. It is well established that obesity, I hate that word, but it's used in the scientific literature, obesity is a trauma response. So obesity is a common symptom of significant psychological trauma, as you have discussed. If you've got trauma, psychological trauma, it is entirely possible to reprocess those memories in your brain and to rehouse them essentially uh, in, in more appropriate places. That's often best done with a skilled therapist and uh, it can often happen more quickly than people might believe. And that I, was, I really do believe is, a, is an incredibly important part of getting yourself into a nice, lovely balance as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And because it's unconscious too, um, and not to say that talk therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy doesn't work because, I mean, there's plenty of studies that show that it does. But um, as you said, it can actually be a lot quicker. I use um, a specific modality called TRTP trauma therapy, which literally in two weeks. Have you heard of that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the Richardson trauma process. I'm familiar with that. Yeah, yeah. I don't do it myself, but I do know people who do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that modalities that that incorporate so that is a is a great modality because it gets people to bring up the memory and to rewire it right then and there with the help of the skilled therapist. I think it's fabulous. Also, things like EMDR, um, which is when you you bring up the memory in a safe, supported way. You're moving your eyes or your body. Uh, it creates. It just it rehouses the components of your brain and parts therapy. Yes. So absolutely. Yeah. It does not just need to be talking therapy. Part therapy is great. Yes. Yes. That's so Uh, good. (laughs) So Richardson's trauma therapy is what we talked about there. And parts therapy is, it's a fairly newish psychological therapy. It's been around since the seventies actually, where we can encourage people to learn about the different components of their mind because we've all got different parts. We all have multiple personalities, 
that doesn't mean we have multiple personality disorder, but we've got parts of our brain that want to protect us, parts that want to run and hide, parts that want to attack other people to keep us safe. And you can learn to to know them and uh, listen to them and let them feel safe and loved. And it is a way that can really quickly help with trauma. As can tapping, emotional freedom technique. That's another technique that we teach our beautiful members a lot as well. So definitely gorgeous people. There is absolutely ways to work through trauma so that you can have a happier happier life more balanced brain and a more balanced body as well so lovely philippa you're out there you've written this book which is fabulous could you tell me what is like your big vision for this book what what is it that you want to create for the world Mm, what what I find, so I studied oh, and practiced functional medicine for a good while before starting to look into more of the metaphysical side of things. And I found that while the strategies and resources are great, it wasn't quite cutting it. Like it's it's known as root cause medicine, but it kind of only stopped it, as you said, sort of like the trunk or maybe even the branches. And so I created the book with that in mind that I wanted to even just revolutionize the way that functional medicine is practiced and healthcare in general as well, in that when someone has a physical symptom, whether that's energy, mood, even like obesity, whatever it is, that we look beyond just treating the body physically because we're not just a physical body, we're an emotional, mental, unconscious, energetic, spiritual body. And also just a way to that everyone has access to that. Like a book is not a very expensive way of doing the work. So you don't have to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars. There's so many great resources and I'm not just talking about my book, (laughs) but lots of other resources (laughs) that if you're feeling a bit stuck and you don't know which way to go, there's so many great processes, methods, very like thought out, intelligent ways of working through an issue. And so I just want to, you know, I can only work with so many from like a one-on-one point of view. Mm. I wanted that to be available to the world. (laughs) I love it. I do. I do. How could people get their hands on this book if they would like to? Yeah, awesome. So, well, currently we are, I don't know, by the time that this is released, it will be available in a lot of places. So definitely you can get it from my website, www.chrisandphilly.fm slash book. But also it'll be on Amazon, book depository, bookstores. If you don't see it in your local bookstore, it's on the book distribution. I can't say that word. (laughs) So like bookstores can order that in for you. Yeah. (laughs) Lovely. And we'll have a link in our show notes as well. And where could people find you on the interwebs? We'll have links to that as well, but you can you can let these beautiful people know. Yeah, cool. So I mentioned our website. We have heaps of free resources on that one as well, scorecards, masterclasses, our own podcast, which Dr. Mary will be on very soon. Yay! Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we're mostly on the social platforms, most active on Facebook and Instagram. So if you search Chris and Philly underscore FM, you'll find us on Instagram. Search up our name on Facebook and we will be there. Love it. I love it. So gorgeous human, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful insights. Could you leave us with a few final like words of wisdom that you would say to people out there who are struggling with burnout, body burnout, with weight? What would you say to these gorgeous people? I always think that we all we have all the answers inside of us. So I know that this might sound a bit woo-woo, but like literally you can ask your body. <laughs> And tap into your body because often people develop body burnout because they've just lost connection with themselves and they they have missed all the signs and your body is incredibly intelligent at communicating to you through pain because that is the way that we're evolved. And so rather than feeling like your body's, you're fighting against your body, then maybe start thinking about it in terms of maybe my body's actually fighting for me. And maybe it actually wants me to be well and whole and happy, but currently I'm kind of feeling these things and experiencing this this pain in my body, however that symptom shows up for you, because you're off track, because you're not listening to yourself. And so that's a beautiful way when I started switching that, 
you know, like a symptom. I developed a lot of histamine intolerance and like chemical sensitivity stuff, which was really frustrating because sometimes it would flare up out of nowhere. And I used to be like, oh, not again. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But then when I started understanding that it was purely just a way that my unconscious state was communicating to me, then I'm like, thank you. Thank you. And holy crap, my body is amazing. Like it's communicating to me right now. I just have to figure out what it's trying to tell me. (laughs) And you can simply ask, like when you start creating more trust with yourself and just having that space to ask, things will pop in your conscious mind. It might be like, yeah, maybe we need to drop the sugar or maybe we need to spend more time with our children. You know, it's usually simple things like that, that the body wants us to do. (laughs) Mm. Yes. Ah, I love it. Ask your body, listen to your body and love your body. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Philippa Bellette, it has been an absolute delight. Thank you so much for coming here and sharing your story and your wisdom with our listeners. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. I've been a bit of a fangirl, so I'm really excited to be here. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take that. Great. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today we discussed a lot about how health and weight loss is so much more than just stop eating chocolate. There are so many components to it, the physical and the emotional component. If you want more, if you want uh, you want to start getting your body and mind into a into a better healthier balance for that easy long-term weight loss as well as great health. A fabulous place to start is with our four-week body rebalance. In this self-paced evergreen online course, Dr. Lucy and I give you everything you need to get going to heal your metabolic hormones. We've got a beautiful mini course with bite-sized information that you, know, you can easily easily digest in five or 10 minutes. We've got information on blood tests, information um, for your doctor, a letter for your doctor. We explain you know, what real food is, how you can use food to balance your hormones, what the hormones are, everything you need to get started with meal plans and recipes and information about specific medications and conditions such as people on weight loss medications. It's all there in this wonderful self-paced course, including a fabulous guided or several fabulous guided hypnotherapies to really get deep down into your emotional brain to really cement that healthy and happy motivation. So check it out, gorgeous people. You can go to our website, rlmedicine.com forward slash 4WBR. The four-week body rebalance and the link will be in the notes as well as a link to Philippa's fabulous book. The information shared on the Real Health and Weight Loss podcast, including show notes and links, provides general information only. It is not a substitute, nor is it intended to provide individualized medical advice, diagnosis or treatment nor can it be construed as such. Please consult your doctor for any medical concerns.